Alrighty, talking about our third option with DJI Pilot Mission Planning, Oblique Flight. So when would we want to use Oblique Flight instead of just a regular mapping mission that we discussed before? Remember, regular mapping mission, drones going like a lawnmower in the air, back and forth, taking photos the whole time. You can use those photos to create a 2D map or something like search and rescue. Maybe you don't want to make a 2D map out of those, just looking at the individual photos. But when we want to create a 3D map, it's important to collect data where we are able to see the side of the objects or the buildings that is going to be within the map. And so because a 2D map, the camera is always facing straight down, the oblique flight allows us to go to the side of the object, the building, and get photos where we're able to see the side and incorporate that into the 3D model. And then also because it's a pre-programmed mission, we're able to make sure that the photos are taken with a certain overlap. So when using photogrammetry software later on, those photos can be stitched together and we are left with a successful 3D model. So for bleak mission planning, same idea here. We go into our mission flight option. We then click create a route and then we'd hit our oblique option. Now, before we get into the mission planning screen there, you can see my rough drawing on the right here, but part one of an oblique mission is just a regular mapping mission, right? We have our lawnmower pattern, the drone's going back and forth, and this filled in square would be our area of interest that we've drawn on the pilot app interface. Camera is going to be Nadir as we go back and forth. What an oblique mission adds is four more flights on each side of our area that's being mapped. And you can see the drone is always going to be facing the area of interest, which means our camera is also facing the area of interest. And instead of pointing straight down, it's going to be pointing at an angle. So we're able to capture the side of the area of interest that's being mapped. This is also going to go into that uh, area of interest uh, just for demonstration's sake though, I uh, drew them all on the outside. So you'll see we'll have a little video demonstration at the end and you'll get an idea of what's actually happening here. But key concept is the drone's gonna be always facing our area of interest on each side. So you can see here, when we go into a bleak mission planning, we now have five options. You can click on the number. So you can see this is our first option, our mapping mission going over the area. And then two, three, four, and five are in each side of our oblique mapping mission. Now, the left side is not always necessarily five, just for reference, it's going to create uh, this one, two, three, four, five to be completed in the most efficient fashion possible. You will have an option to select if you only wanted to do uh, certain ones later on, uh, but we'll get to that here shortly. Most of the settings are gonna be the same. You do have the ability to adjust the gimbal pitch. So as we talked about, it's no longer gonna be 90 degrees straight down. Default would be 60 degrees, but if you want to make adjustments to that, you can be used in flights two to five. Also speed for the oblique flight missions as well. Once again, depending on our altitude and overlap. And then if we go into the advanced settings, we have the option to adjust side overlap and frontal overlap. So when we're talking about side overlap, that's really how close our lines are gonna to be together because we're taking photos here on each line. So if we decrease the side overlap ratio to 50%, we're gonna get farther apart here. And if we increase our side overlap ratio, it's going to uh, bring these lines closer together and we would have more passes as we go back and forth. Frontal overlap is how often we're taking photos as the drone is going uh, down our flight route here, the overlap of those photos that are being taken. Since 3D mapping does require a relatively high overlap ratio, 
it would be recommended to use the default settings within the application. Uh, for flat terrains, the overlap ratio can be lowered. Uh, front overlap ratio should be no lower than 65% and side overlap ratio should be no lower than 60% though. Depending on your use case though, could definitely play with this. Could also do multiple flights uh, with a new use case or application and see how low can we bring the overlap ratio perhaps and maintain the quality of data that's needed. And you can also see uh, if your model quality is increased by increasing that overlap ratio as well. Showing the frontal overlap here though, in a quick animation, you can see photos would be triggered as we go along our flight route and how often those are triggered as we talked about before would be changed with our frontal overlap ratio. All right, so after planning is complete, you can go ahead and save the mission. And then when we hit the play button to execute the mission, you can see now that we can deselect certain flight routes. If you'd want to deselect a number, you can just tap it. So if we didn't want to do number five, we could deselect it. And then you can see based on the picture here that number five is now gone. So if we go back, number five is there. And if we go number five, it's now gone. So if you weren't sure if two, three, four, or five was your top one, and maybe you have an obstruction there that you don't want the drone flying that fifth one, you can go ahead and deselect that. And to kind of bring this all together, I'm just going to show a quick video here. So we're connect completing the end of number one here. Just our regular mapping mission. You can see the camera's pointing straight down. We went ahead and selected all five of the mapping missions. So now after number one is completed, it's gonna go ahead and upload our second flight route to the drone. We don't need to stop or anything. The drone's just gonna keep going. We'll continue to the starting point and we'll switch over to the drone camera here momentarily so you can see that the gimbal pitch is now 60 degrees. So say this car, this building are our area of interest. You can see we're now capturing data of the side of those objects. And then you can see now when the drone gets to the bottom, it's not gonna turn around and face the other way because we don't care about what's over here. It's going to crawl to the side and then back up while keeping the camera facing forward. So that's how that oblique mission is going to work. Same idea after it completes number two, go to number three. And while number two is taking place, you could click on a different flight route uh, to preview that. And then you can see our percentage of the specific flight that's taking place. Number of photos have been taken, height, distance, horizontal speed of the drone, as we defined our oblique speed to be 7.2 miles an hour earlier on. So hopefully that makes sense as to how oblique flight works, what settings are added from mapping flights, and where that could be useful for your operations.